Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Takes and Tenders. I'm Kyle. That's Sean. And I'm, who's waving. I'm Sean. <laughs> Ugly man. That's Alf with the rather large forehead, and that's Justin Keeter. <laughs> At the end there. And today's topics, we're gonna run them off real quick. Today we're gonna start off with DC Universe movies and how they're on the rise. Uh, then we're going to discuss the Weekend album, which was fire. And at the and we're going to follow it up with Justin Keeter over here. And he's bringing some fucking topic. I don't even remember. Uh, and we're going to round it off with ACL injuries in the NFL and our opinions on it and how to prevent it. All right? First topic, let's begin. DC Universe movies. Sean, let's start it off. <coughs> So it's it's been pretty much a slow period of, of movies over the summer, and that's me putting it mildly. Um, probably arguably a, a horrible uh, summer for movies, if you've been honest. Fourth uh, of July, no movie, no movie dropped on Fourth of July, and that's been that's first time in a while, um, which got me kind of thinking because Marvel has been in the news uh, over the past few years with all the movies they're making, but as of right now, <clears throat> between now and 2020, DC DC um, we'll make 11 movies. Um, that's that's 11 movies within the next five years. That's crazy. Um, that's mind blowing. Suicide Squad and and um and uh, Suicide Squad, Batman vs Superman, Wonder Man, Wonder Woman, Justice League, also directed by Zack Snyder, The Flash and Aquaman, uh, Shazam. The lead role is going to be uh, with The Rock. He's got he's got the lead role in that. Uh, Justice League Two, and I believe the last two is going to be Cyborg and Green Lantern. Um, not sure if you if you realize just how many movies that is coming from one comic book studio, videos, but that's quite a lot. <clears throat> in comparison, over the last five years, DC released The Dark Knight Rises, directed by God Himself, Christopher Nolan. <laughs> uh, Green Lantern, that trash. And then Man is Still. That's three movies they released in, in five years, over the past five years. Three movies. During that same time frame, Marvel released 16 movies, including two Avengers, two Captain Americas, two Amazing Spider-Mans, two X-Men, and two Thors. So my question is, even with the way Marvel has owned DC the past five years, is Marvel in trouble? I mean, their dominance seems to be purely based on DC's complacency, complacency yeah. over the past few years, laziness, and... You know, I, I think DC has better content, better storylines, you know, better substance, and I, I think yeah. Marvel's in trouble here, man. All right, so I'm gonna start off with this one. I personally think, you know, DC. You have Batman; he's the greatest superhero bar none, in my opinion. There's no superhero that matches his his level of awesomeness. So I think right off the bat, you have you know Suicide Squad and all this other shit coming out with Batman featuring in it. This is their time. I know I know Marvel's running low on movies. I think this is the time for DC to strike, man. I swear. I think you're going to have some really good quality movies, hopefully, coming out from DC, and I think it's going to be big, big. All right, Alf, what do you think? Um, uh, uh, I'm not a huge fan but as a, more of a casual perspective, um, as a song that would go and see me get their invited or something like that, uh, I would be a lot more apt to go and see a superhero movie than a superhero movie. <laughs> this is uh, just because I have an idea of what it's about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that kind of explains why there's so many superhero movies, because it gets people like me to the movie theater. Right. Yeah, so that's just like the volume of... of the that just kind of shows you like how superhero movies can drag anybody to the theater, man. If it's a hot day, everybody's like, let's go see fucking somebody blow something up. That's the big thing, you know? Everybody loves superhero movies. All right, Keeter, what do you think? Keter, fucking I don't care. <laughs> I think it all comes down to uh, Ben Affleck and his role as Batman. If that doesn't come off good, um, I don't know. It's going to be a lot. They're putting a lot of backing into Ben Affleck. I don't know if I'm trust that. But that's, that's – I mean, they, gotta, they have to have an inkling. Like, that's – he's pretty good. I mean, you don't just go and say, here, let's do seven movies with this guy, and he's – they don't think he's good, you know what I mean? True, but he could be, you know, another George Clooney Batman. So, you know, no, that's another no, no. Oh, yeah. God, stop it. Why would you say that? Why would you do that? Why, why go there? Tell us negativity. Obviously, <laughs> in order for them to sign him to seven more, a seven-picture deal, they, they've already seen man, uh, man, uh, Batman versus Superman. 
and they they like what they saw. So uh, <laughs> you know, he's George Clooney. Oh, you might as well just say Val Kilmer or some other crap. Hey, Val Kilmer was a good Batman. He was better than George Clooney. George Clooney may be the worst. We'll see. <laughs> but I don't know. It just depends. It all depends on how this next Batman and Superman comes out. All right, like, real Marvel quick, still real quick, Chris, run it off. Run it off. Who do you, do you guys think he'll be better than Christian Bale? Run it off. Everybody go. Your opinion. Uh, no. 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 Yes. I changed my. I changed my vote. I, I said no five seconds ago. I say yes now. Uh, I think he will be. All right. So yeah. moving on to the next topic. Let's we'll talk. Let's talk about the weekend album. I know everybody has in this party has given it a time to digest. I know I have. I fucking love it. That's my opinion. Fuck you if you disagree. Um, let's move around. Um. I just saw his numbers. He he uh, sold four hundred thousand, co- almost four hundred thousand copies in his first, uh, or a little over four hundred thousand copies in his first week. That's big numbers. That qu- quadruples his first, his first um, album sales, Kissland, which wow. sucked. So uh, run it off. Um, what do you think, Sean? I think the the weekend, Beauty Behind the Madness, was an amazing album. And I, I rarely use that term when it comes to R and B album or just any album in, in general. I think it was an amazing album. The production was excellent. It was he was so dialed then. It, it seems as though he put so much time and effort in making this album and making this music. There is not a skippable track on this album. I can listen to it back and front all the way through, and I have for the past three weeks. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's wonderful content. It's writing music. You can ride to it. You can work out to it. You can just vibe to it. It's great stuff. I believe those album sales are based on his content alone. I don't think it's hype. I really don't. I mean, some some people are going to argue that it's hype. Those sales are based on off of hype. But, I mean, that substance is what it is, man. He got quality music, and it's just it's well on his way to being one of the best R&B albums I've ever heard, man. And Quick that's question. Just not, Quick question for you: If he didn't release "Can't Feel My Face," do you think he sells four hundred thousand copies? No, uh, no, no. But "Can't Feel My Face" is a great song, though. You it's, know? Uh, it's fantastic. I'm just saying, but it's a radio hit. He he wouldn't have the reach he has without that song. That's my opinion. I mean, yeah. he'd have the sale of me. I've been listening to him for a long time. I know he has, like most of us have. I don't know if Sean has, but I just think that that song probably. Pushed him into everybody's, you know, ears, and everybody's like, "Oh, I love Can't Feel My Face. Let me buy his album." All right, Alf, what do you think? Um, I was, uh, I thought it was a good album. It was a very good album. I think it was a great album. Um, I think as good of a, of a vocalist as Abel is, he, I think he played really s- safe in what he does well. He didn't um, go too low in his register. He stayed in that kind of that uh, soprano. Um, you know, uh, all that kind of high pitched voice that he's famous for. I thought the production was was good. It could have been adjusted in a lot of spots. That could have made a lot of the crescendos and, and big moments like Angels and Real Life. Those could have been a little more epic. I think it was a little more. If the songs were designed a little bit better. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of really good songs. I think the only potentially great songs are the singles. Mm. Um, I do like the uh, like the, the collabs with Ed Sheeran and uh, Lana Del Rey went over well. But yeah, those are really good. It, it just needed it. It just needed a little bit more tweaking, I think, and I think a little bit more risk taking if it wants to be a great. But it's a good album. It's a, it's a great album. album. It's a great album. It's a great album. Al. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Justin. What do you think? I liked it. I mean, it's what I expected from the weekend. Solid album. I probably won't play it a lot. It's kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of more into the, the Travis Scott album that dropped yesterday. I really like that album. A lot of people don't. I can understand why, but to me, that shit bangs. Yeah, in my it's car. very easy to understand why people don't like that album. It's not yeah. like you're just like, oh, it's amazing. Why don't you like it? Like to pimp a butterfly. Like you know. But yeah, you but understand, some, you understand why people don't like it because it, it's not a lot of substance. I well, know we're off topic. People also don't nowadays. People listen to music through headphones instead of cars. Travis Scott's albums are like I have. It's a more of a car riding album. I just like it, man. I like that. 
Weekend's album's good. I thought it had some good songs, but he just produces the same type of album. He's afraid to take risks. Right. And that's what I. Okay, so my question is, what do you guys mean by risk, man? This guy's talking about uh, stealing I, Jordans I'll and spending fucking is, bitches and getting ahead. And, no, no, it's not so much what he's talking about. It's the, every album he makes sounds exactly like House of Balloons. He has not made a different type of album. It's the same kind of wow. dark R and B drug type music. That's what he does, and he's smart to keep his core. And he released a pop single to get someone that might not have heard of the weekend into that album. So what he's doing is right. I right. just you know. We're running out of time here. I got a quick question to run through everybody. Do you think he should do a uh, project with Lana Del Rey? Real quick, run through. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! That <laughs> work. That work. Yeah. What do you think? I'd rather have, I'd rather him do a project with Party Next Door. Ooh, uh, that's a good one. That's a topic. All right, next topic. Um, We'll bring it up. Uh, ACL injuries in the NFL. Um, I know we discussed on this a little bit, but I, as you see, a lot of players are getting injured with ACL injuries. So, you know, the big question is, is there a way to kind of just prevent this? Do you do you play less games, preseason games, or do you make – you got it something – I mean, I don't know if you can change it. I mean, it is a freak injury. It, it really is. I mean, it can happen to anybody. You could be walking, you know, getting some grocery bags. You step over a curb. Damn, there was my ACL. You know, it's just, just a freak thing. But do you think there's a way for the NFL to kind of just, you know, make some changes so that it's easier to avoid? I, that's my well, question, I guess. What do you guys think? Sean, I'll we'll start off with you. The, 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 the issue is they did make a change. They made a change in 2011. That's why we're going through this. Now, I don't want to say officially or 100% that is the guaranteed reason why we're dealing with this, but the current CBA has, has severely reduced the amount of, uh, of number of workouts and practices that can be held and, and, and muscles can be used, uh, uh, you know, hence more non-contact injuries. They work against themselves with it. It was signed in 2011. They, have, they, they used to have two-a-days, all right? Two-a-days were canceled. It, was, it makes it a disadvantage for coaches unable to implement the game plan they want so on and so forth. Bill, Bill Belichick in 2013, guys, he's an asshole, but the guy is a freaking genius, man. I mean, he's always ahead of the game and, and everything when involved in football. Bill Belichick said in 2013 that he blamed the increase in injuries on the decrease in number of off-season, preseason, and in-season practice sessions due to lack of conditioning. That's due to the CBA. The CBA made that uh, the new CBA bargain agreement made that change in 2011. Uh, I believe since that time, is those injuries, those not, I have to look at those non-contact injuries, it, it represents a greater than 50% increase in, in starters being injured in the era of this, uh, the current CBA. I, I, I believe it is an issue. It's going to have to be revisited with the CB, uh, the CBA. The CBA is going to be revisited with the NFL uh, Players Union and the NFL and the owners. Um, there, there is a correlation there, in my opinion. All right, Alf. Um, I think there's a few things going on, and it's not all CBA related. I think one of the big reasons is the turf that they're playing on. I remember when Bruce Jenkins got hurt like five years ago. He was complaining about the turf in the middle ends. That was a big reason. Um, that and the shoes these guys wear are really small and thin, so they can run faster, but they could also uh, – it's almost like they run – too fast, and there's not as much support. Um, and th thirdly, there's just a lot of guys are just bigger and faster now, and they're and they're moving and changing directions at faster speeds than pretty much any other athlete um, across most sports. Um, and it, it and that's kind of tricky because you can't really change that. Um, and they're even like it, it, they're way bigger now than they were even like ten years ago. Um, especially twenty years ago, it's a uh, it's a really big difference. It's, it's, so it's hard to really put rules and stuff on that. Right. All know. right. Okay. Justin, what do you think? I think it's. I mean, I don't want to do away with preseason. It sucks when a star goes down like Jordy Nelson. Uh, but you know. One thing about college football is there is no preseason, so the first couple weeks are some sloppy football. 
So, I mean, if you're going to do away with even more practicing, you're going to have to realize that the first three or four weeks of the NFL is going to be horrible. Another thing is if we do away with preseason, we're going to lose a lot of chances for the bottom of the roster guys to shine. I mean, look at the Jets. we got a guy like Damon Harrison. He was a guy that came in and shined in preseason. Now is a big part. Uh, Rontez, Rontez Miles this year. Uh, Usawa, however you say his name, is another one. So, I mean, it sucks when it's a star, an important player, but – it's also we only hear about preseason ACL injuries when it's a star. I mean, no one was up in arms about canceling preseason when Stephen Hill went down for the Panthers. Half my timeline didn't even know that happened, and we're telling me when uh, Benjamin got hurt that it's now Stephen Hill's time to shine, and I had to remind everyone he was already hurt like two weeks ago. So it's, you know, it, it's give and take. You can't overreact. you got to have these guys practicing. I mean, they don't really practice at all anyway, so now we're all even right. taking away preseason Running out of time, games. so let me, let me run this question by you guys real quick. Reduce to two precinct games and increase to two a days. What do you think? I don't want football to change at all. The thing is, if you do that, it comes at a cost in the CBA somewhere else. So it's not that simple. It depends on on what the trade-off is. All right. So final topic. Uh, Justin, what did you want to bring up? I I, I completely forgot. I'm sorry. (laughs) We can talk about the plane breakup that happened a couple weeks ago. (laughs) Excellent topic. All right. So I don't know if many of you guys remember, but a couple weeks ago there was a guy who, while they were sitting on the tarmac, I believe, broke up with his girlfriend, and it was being live tweeted. So I just wanted to, uh, what we guess would be the um, craziest breakup situation you would you would have be involved in or have seen. So we'll start well, off with Sean. Well, I just want to say, you know, and I just want to, I just want to. Um, be serious here for a moment. You know, we live in a world, man, where these 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 young kids they break up on airplanes, and it, it touches me, touches me dearly, and and it's a, it's a it's a serious issue, and I think it needs to we need to pay more attention to it, and I think it's it's one of the biggest issues out here today. I'm lying, I'm just making it up. That dude should have been shot by a goddamn air marshal for breaking <laughs> up with his girl on the airplane before taking off. He's the biggest asshole I've seen in quite some time to break up with your girl before you take off on an airplane and he had to sit next to her for the entire flight. It was quite possibly the dumbest decision he could have done. So then he was forced to re- reconcile with her even before the plane. I'm just so done. So. But yeah, right, the, 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 I guess the weirdest place to uh, to break up with someone is, you know, um, in the bathroom at a Chipotle. I don't know. <laughs> he wants Chipotle today, so that's why he reckoned, yeah. mentioned it twice already. All right, so uh, what do you think? Um, I uh, well, it, 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 I can just kind of tell what kind of like, a guy this is. Um, I've seen a lot of these kinds of guys, but they don't really think about things before they do them. They just do them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, oh shit, I got a whole. Playing right now. Oh man. Oh yeah. Like it, that's it, it. It's not even about the breakup. It's just about you just being so uh, ignorant to a situation that you would do something like that. I mean, I'm sure it's happened more than this occasion. But this is the first time that you now we have social media, and all that kind of stuff. So we hear about it, but. All right, so what's, what do you think is the weirdest place to break up with somebody? Me, the worst place? Uh, oh, man. I guess in line at Chipotle would be worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin, what do you think? Especially know, especially well, if, if she's paying, too. So <laughs> that's just, uh, <laughs> if you're on the quesadilla, then you deserve it, honestly. <laughs> All right, Justin, what do you think? I don't know what would be worse, to get dumped on a plane or then to get dumped, get off the plane and find out that you're a trending topic on Twitter. That's got to be even worse. (laughs) I'm definitely with Sean, man. If I was on that plane, because I hate awkwardness, especially when it's around me and you can't escape it and to have to sit through a plane from, you know, Raleigh to New York and watch two college kids go through young love and they're probably drunk 
would probably be a definition of hell to me. So that's, that's another thing. You you know there there's you know they did it before uh, before the plane took off, right? So you're, yeah, well, you're they were like on a uh, uh on the tarmac. And you're just sitting there for however many hours. You're just sitting there for however many hours, just like, and you've already done, the, you've already broken up. So it's just like now this awkwardness it fulfills the airplane. It's just, it's, ah, oh, it's just, it's all kind of fucked up. So what do you, what do you think your weirdest place would be? Uh, I actually have a funny random story. One of my good friends back in college dated a girl, and he didn't have a bank account, so he got his paycheck deposited into her account, and then he cheated on said girl. And <laughs> his paycheck kept going into her account, and I thought that was the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, so, wow. news to everyone out there: if your paycheck goes in your girl's account, don't cheat on her. Don't cheat on her. <laughs> and the weirdest place to break up with someone would probably be at her parents' house during a cookout or something. On <laughs> holidays. Right as you get your burgers. Oh, right holidays, before the you no. guys are snowed in and, 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 and you can't leave and all that. I don't know. So. My buddy is a pretty ruthless man. He dumped a girl before her birthday. He didn't want to get her a present, so that's uh, kind of dirty. Jesus. <laughs> this is the, the scummiest people, man. All right. You know. So let's move on to our final topic. It's the uh, We're going to wrap the show up here. Um, let's run through what bothered us this weekend or this week, oh, per se. This weekend. This, yeah, I'm sorry. The weekend just started. I apologize. So this week, what bothered you? I know what bothered me. I'll end it on the show with it. Go ahead, Sean. Tell us what bothered you this week. Well, I mean, and I'm really getting serious. This, this, what, what bothered me this past week was uh, on the VMAs. Uh, during during the VMAs, um, you know, the cameras was focused on Kim Kardashian quite a bit. But what bothered me a lot was the body shaming of Kim Kardashian. Um, she she's a mother. Uh, and she's carrying a child, and I, I and the body shaming of a mother carrying a child is 100% unacceptable on so many levels. It's not funny. It's not cool. It doesn't make you look cool. It doesn't make you look funny. It doesn't make you look like a tough guy. It's it's ugly. It's disrespectful. You know, it's just trashy stuff to do, man. To body shame a woman while she's carrying a child, and it's just disgusting, man. It wasn't funny, man. It was just awkward, and I, and and I hate it, and it burned me up this past weekend. To as many issues I have with Kim Kardashian, she's off limits, man, for body shaming at this point. Because she's carrying a goddamn child, man, and these and these fools just want to just go at her because they don't got they don't have any home training. It's just it's just disrespectful and it just burns me up. So I think they're just jealous. Most of the time, people are just jealous, so they have to have some sort of comment. And it's just it's I think people in general are just ridiculous. Uh, Alf, what, what bothered you this week? Um, you all bothered me this weekend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I lost. That's your fault, though. You, you oh, yeah, <laughs> you lost the key. Okay, it's not you all. It's the process of making a key is way too expensive and intense. And <laughs> I lost my key, and it took me five hours and two hundred and eighty dollars to get a new one. That's, we found that's it, a lot, it, man. It was in like the third I think. I think finding the key is the kick in the balls, though. That's that's I, the worst. I, yeah, I was mad when I found it. I would be too. I mean, you were live tweeting the whole thing, but I mean, as Drew told us, I mean, at least you got to see the sunset, right? In the back of the <laughs> yeah, a gorgeous, a gorgeous sunset on the back of an illegally parked ball. <laughs> that thing was. And you didn't get a ticket. Like hours, I didn't get a ticket. So well, that's 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 even more impressive. See that, that yeah, somebody cool. was on your side with that one. I mean, you paid two eighty, but I mean, what did the ticket would have been? Probably about three hundred. So you you saved twenty dollars in the end. <laughs> All right, Justin, what bothered you this week? Uh, Larry Fedora. I watched my Tar Heels play South Carolina on Thursday night, and they have a guy named Elijah Hood who rushed for 10. He had 10 carries for 130 yards, Jesus. and they took him out. I was they like, took him out? Yep. He got 10 carries, 130 yards. They had the ball first and goal on the six-yard line, four passes, sack, season over, or game over. Season over, Larry Fedora should be fired. My math is is a little fuzzy. There's got to be 11 or 12 yards of carry or something. He was like that. The, easily the best player on the field. I know you guys. A lot of people were watching the 13, 13 yards. But yeah, uh, Jesus Christ. It was it was stupid, man. That guy looked like a pro. I was like, good lord. And then uh, the VMAs. I watched that, and uh, I was impressed that yet again the Illuminati showed up on the award, <laughs> even though people still try to tell me. Close your ears, dude. Close your ears. <laughs> it still showed up. And Miley Cyrus 
is a train wreck. Something, I don't something, know how. <laughs> something wrong with Miley, man. I don't know what's going on with her. So I, I guess round out uh, my part. Um, you know what bothered me was like I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, Amber Rose and Black China wore these like these suits that said like "ho slut bitch um, gold digger" and all that other stuff. And I'm like, I mean, I understand you're trying to make a statement. I'm just like, I don't. I mean, I don't know what you're aiming for with that. I mean, most of our, their Instagram videos are them twerking on the side of pink, you know, trucks. I don't know what – I'm not sure I understand what they're aiming for with that. So I don't, I don't know. I'm confused with people sometimes, man, but that's just me. I don't know what you guys think about it, but Who? people are weird. I don't know, Amber I just, Rose. I was on the back of you, Halter. <laughs> I mean, I didn't. I didn't watch the VMAs. I just. I remember seeing like after, like, look what Amber Rose wore. I'm like, what? I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, my, my thing is this. She, she, she's an opportunity. She's an opportunist. Um, I'm, I'm not going to knock her. Um, uh, as long as she's not saying anything negative, um, you know, she speaks positive a lot. A lot of people don't realize that she does have have a lot uh, has has a positive story. She has a positive vibe. She speaks positive. When you hear her talk. She's all about positive and educating girls and feminism and all this stuff. She she talks positive. So I don't have any problems with her being an opportunist and using what God gave her to do what she got to do, so on and so forth. As long as it doesn't come out on the other end as as far as being negative and, you know, so I, I'm good with I'm, I'm good with uh, Amber Rose. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I understand why they were doing it, I guess. I mean, I will have to say, you know, they we wanted to... the, the, it's the labels that they've been called or something like that. And, but I don't know if they were they said anything or, like, they spoke about it, so I'm not sure what they I think they they're doing, like, a, uh, we've got to be thankful for Amber Rose because if it wasn't for her, we would not get one of the greatest albums ever released in my beautiful my... dark twisted fantasy. Uh, so my- I, I do want to give you the breaking one uh, percent Jets news. Josh Johnson is Teflon. So and WA, let's go. He's, he's wait, Teflon. so he's they cut Matt Flynn. Yeah, they, oh, yeah. Cut, they cut Matt Flynn. And so Josh, WA, Josh Johnson is Teflon. He's on there. We got rid of Babin. That's awesome. Nice little live breaking news. Boop. I tell you what, man. I like Josh Johnson. I, he's not going to do anything. He's not going to take the starting spot. But I mean, I like I like what I saw. So it's like if Fitz goes down, I feel comfortable with him being there. You know, so it's good. Uh, but it's it's Chino's job. He's going to come back. He's going to take it. He's going to he's going to take us to the Super Bowl. So it's all that matters. To I, I kind of feel bad for Matt Flynn, though. Uh, you know, Matt Flynn. He, I mean, he's a solid, okay backup. Nah, pitcher. he. That guy has been. I, 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 I saw him. Money, man. I saw him on Thursday. He was, he was the. He is a white Mark Sanchez, guaranteed. I, I saw Sanchez esque throws from him. I was like, this. I gotta get get him off the team. Get him out of here. That's that what I saw. Is the epitome of school of like maximizing like dollar per, like. He's made a lot of money. He's made a lot of money. He's made a Your lot of money to do Big, nothing. That's impressive. My man Big Cheese says it best. Matt Flynn is the epitome of white privilege. <laughs> there you go. That dude this is the best. And I guess we get him that. I mean, Rebus right. has capitalized as well too. You know, so he's good. Rebus yeah, oh, yeah, is good. <laughs> is good. Well, well, my thing is this. I mean, he's taking the most. I mean, both of them. Have have taken the advantage of, of their situation in different ways, though. Brevis, yeah, I'm not gonna get hot. Uh, yeah, they can't be mad and forget that. Their money. opportunity. Not yeah, gonna that when, you know. Every team he goes, to, another team pays him a lot of money. It's not and, like and that's what it is. I mean, I don't, you know. It's amazing. It's funny. It's he something. took one game of six touchdowns and he he oh. ghost rode it all the way to for his bank. Dollars, that's a damn great four hundred one k right there. Six uh-huh. touchdowns set for life. Eight, what did he get? Eighteen million dollars. He, yeah, he made off better than Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, you know, robbed the fucking bills blind over there, and he, he had to play more. Yeah, eighteen million, and got benched for Russell Wilson. That is my man. That will go on his tombstone. That's, now that, yeah, that's where it all started right there. When the Bills gave Ryan Fitzpatrick that deal in like twenty eleven, in like week five, week six. You no, know, they were five and zero, oh, right? Five or six. Yeah, they were five and zero. Oh, 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 after that, Fitzpatrick <laughs> since they gave him that contract. That's our quarterback, week one, guys. Get ready. 
So yeah, oh, I'm, 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 right. I'm off of Fitz. I'm off. I'm, I'm off of Fitz. I'm rooting for. Let's go, Fitz. You know, it's it's right. not even about so you. You can open your ears again. About Fitz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's I'm, I'm, let's root for Fitz right now. But let's let's hope we win some games, etc. Blah 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 blah. All right. So we'll end the show on that. Uh, this has been your first episode of Takes and Tenders. Once again, I'm Kyle. That's Sean in the box there. Uh, that's Alf, and that's Justin, who's not even who's got ADD. So yeah. uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs>